Let me tell we're good to go. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for being here. Um, so, none of the pressure. Uh, so, I'm Kaveh Shirazi, and I'm going to be telling you more about the uh, way this goes. Let's 
So it's kind of like pitched this stuff. So initially, we pitched it as two separate sessions, but DA kind of put it together, which was worked out pretty good, pretty well for us. And both the Pakistani group of community and the Chinese group of community got airtime. And people noticed. Globally, people noticed. Locally, people noticed. And suddenly, we started getting some traction in our conversations. So the image of three people shouting at one started to change. People started listening to us. They started engaging us in conversation. And then we kind of went back. Coast Munich, we hit the iron while it was hot. And we went back to all the people we'd spoken to and started engaging them, kind of like collecting on the commitment. So whoever said, yes, I'd like to be involved, I'd like to be involved, and I was like, well, you said you'd like to be involved, it's happening, this is the date, this is the time, this is the sky by date, you are involved, what are you going to talk about? So it was kind of like, you know, just jumping on that. But the lovely thing was, it wasn't, <clears throat> it wasn't very difficult to kind of like jump and get it done. I'd say 90% of the people, maybe even 95% of the people, they just wanted to hear, they're like, okay, can I have this time slot instead of that time slot? I mean, the time difference, given it was winter times, was five hours. So some folks who wanted to be involved, like some of, our, some, some of my clients in Australia, they couldn't be involved because it was just, you know, it was, it's kind of putting them out a bit too much, and you have to wake up at like, you know, uh, two in the morning to speak at this thing. So, ah, <coughs> uh, pardon? Weren't they already working? No, they weren't. These guys actually work. So what we did was we collected a whole bunch of speakers. We had Jacob Singh, we had Stefan Wan Host, who was here speaking earlier, we had Jenny Tihan, uh, we had uh, Ben Wilding from Cameron and Wilding, we had Ed from Cameron and Wilding, we had some local guys who volunteered, we have a speaker over here as well, Dominique Tukuman from Belgium. So it was a real it was a real mix of international speakers who got involved over Skype. And we had a sponsor, you know, which, was, which was amazing, because Aberdeen Cloud came to us and said, hey, do you want a sponsor? You know, we, hadn't, we kind of like thought we wouldn't get a sponsor, we weren't bothering with sponsors. But these guys came and said, hey, you guys don't have a sponsor. And we were like, okay, awesome, what are you offering? So uh, they sponsored the camp, which was brilliant. So Drupal Camp Pakistan happened on November the 17th, 2012. Uh, it was held at the Islamabad campus of Preston University, so we had a good name behind us. There were 120 attendees. <laughs> we had two tracks. One track was just purely tech training. Um, there was, there's, there's, there's a guy I mentioned earlier, Azmat. He runs a training workshop. And he had this amazing factory line going, where he'd get like 20 people in a room, Download Drupal, install Drupal, do this, do that, and then Hello World webpage. You're done. Okay, next part. And so a queue of people, he go out and go, you, have you been to my training session? No, okay, you're coming inside. And he just pick on university students at Preston University and just churn them through this machine. And what ended up was, he ended up training 45 new guys who knew nothing about Drupal previously through his, what I call his production machine. And it was awesome, we had like six speakers, we had, he, he ran a marathon of four hours of training. I know the guy didn't break for lunch or coffee. Mm -hmm. you know, he just kept taking them through it, which is absolutely incredible. So, looking back, Drupal Camp Pakistan, first ever camp in Pakistan, it was epic. You know, we expected about 40, 50 people to turn up. We expected maybe to train a dozen odd people, because Drupal, though not new over there, is competing against some very old names. Like Pakistan's biggest, uh, sort of like, you could say, tech base is Microsoft. After that, you've got the big names like SAP and Oracle. Then you've got open source. And in open source, WordPress has been there for a very long time. Uh, then you've got Joomla. So we're kind of like further down in the pecking order. So to get people into a Drupal account, was an absolute mountain to climb. But I think I was kind of like chosen to do that. <laughs> um, and we, 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 we kind of like, you know, we, we pulled it off and it wouldn't have been possible without the international community, without everyone behind us, uh, kind of like, you know, picking me up on places where it felt like, you know, I should really give this up and concentrate on business development because that's really my job. 
uh, and not bother with these guys who don't want to get involved. But it was it was nice. Like everyone would. I have friends who just pick me up when I needed to be picked up with the right words, saying like, you know, so what if 10 people turn up? So what if 20 people turn up? And then when 120 people turn up, the only mistake we didn't make at the camp was we took this picture right at the end. It was like when we were asked by Preston University to kindly F off because you've always said you're welcome, uh, we said, hang on, we haven't had a group picture yet. So we had to like, quickly gather our people and take a group picture. I was stunned. But at the end of the day, when everything was finished, that many people were still hanging around to find out what's happening next in the group or in Pakistan. Done for it here and colleagues, etc. And clients, so I was like, why? Yeah, you've got a software house there. You've got an investment there, but why are you spending so much time developing this community? And for me, it's about people and relationships first and Drupal second. It's about turning a crowd into a community and making my own place within. So it's all about connectedness uh, with those around me and at different degrees of connectivity. Uh, at the end of the day, we are, so, we are all social animals, and I like to think like, you know, I'm, I'm an extremely social animal. And I kind of like can't live in isolation like no one can. Especially when I know that there's such an awesome community globally. There's so much to learn from them, not just sit out at a distance and just look at the, the groups and follow which modules are coming, but, but to actually interact with them and learn first hand, come to cons, come to camps. And it was kind of taking that, exporting that and saying, yeah, we can only afford to bring six, seven guys to group cons. We can only afford to bring X number of people to Portland or Prague or Munich or London. But what we can do is take these guys create camps and give the locals who can't afford to come over here the same experience. So, from trial and error, kind of learned that broadcast before you narrow pass. Um, it's about connecting communities, it's also about connecting with communities, and by doing so you kind of like start adopting and living in the spirit of the community, and it's about being inclusive. Uh, one of the cultural uh, the word I'm looking for, polite word I'm looking for. Uh, one of the weird things about South Asian culture is they're very introverted. You know, so, so the whole universe is kind of middle earth and they don't particularly give you know, a shizer about what goes on around them, you know, outside of middle earth. So it was very difficult to get them out of that mindset and, and say, look, it's, it's about inclusion. You know, so what if your English isn't great and if you come to a con and you can't really communicate? But you can, because you're not there to kind of find a girlfriend or a wife or a BFF. You're there to protect. You, set, you share the same passion as the next man. And that barrier was difficult to overcome, but the only way we overcame it was by bringing those people to the con and just letting them loose. And it was amazing. Like, the second day I had like, I was just following some of my, uh, some of my kids and I was seeing, hey, he's linked to him on Facebook and I was like, wow, these guys are actually making friends over here. And one of my guys was like, dude, when you came over here, you said you couldn't speak English. What happened? Like, you taught everyone Urdu. And he goes, uh, no, I just overcame my fear of speaking to strangers. And I was like, well, that's one of the things you kind of do when you enter a community. Is you open up and you meet new people and you make friends and, and we all kind of walk the journey together. So for me, it's all about the rock. It's about communities, not just the Drupal community, not just the communities out in the rural outbacks of Pakistani valleys and mountains, but it's about the entire community that occupies this, this planet of ours, this amazing planet of ours. And it's about how how we, how we can like connect with each other, how we can improve the lot of others. It's about sharing knowledge, it's about giving people the opportunity to better themselves, it's giving them the opportunity to have the same opportunities that we have. So it's kind of like, I look at us as those who've been dealt really good cards. You know, so we, we, we're privileged. Uh, other parts of the world, they're not so privileged. So we can't just kind of like, you know, I'm not going to say any of us would like shit about them, but we can't just ignore them. So we've got to give something back, and what better to give them the knowledge? 
And that's the conversation I've been having with Acquia is taking your knowledge pool, your knowledge base, and giving it to these guys who can't afford to go to a training course, who can't afford, some of them can't afford to go to camps, even in Islamabad, we have to like, you know, pay for some guys to come over to one camp, because they can't afford the camp fare from one city to another. So it's about sharing that knowledge, and that's what communities are really about. And that's what kind of like got me involved with the Drupal community, coming back to the purity of what we are. We're social animals, that's what we are. Okay, that's me, that's my blog, and other than building the Drupal community in uh, Islamabad, in Pakistan, uh, that's something else that I'm doing. I'm not going to talk about it right now, but if you go on Twitter and follow it, you kind of like, figure out what it is, and it all kind of connects back to building communities. And uh, it's been, uh, it's been an, it has been so far an awesome journey. We're arranging another camp at the end of this month in Lahore. Uh, Pakistan is a huge country, 180 million people. Uh, second most or third most populous city in the world is Karachi. We haven't even thought about Karachi yet. So we thought we kind of like move from like you know the easy cities to the more difficult ones. Uh, so we're moving from Islamabad to Lahore. Uh, we don't have a venue. We have a date. We have. Speakers who are kind of confirmed, and I'll be like calling on uh, some of you folks over here to be speakers as well uh, over Skype. We have a brave soul in the room. Uh, Dominique is flying out to the uh to speak in person. Uh, I had to convince Dominique's wife yesterday that I would look after him while he is there. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, we we. We're going to have uh, an awesome experience at putting up another camp. I don't know, to be honest, I have no idea what it's going to be like. Because I, I haven't been to Lahore, maybe other than like maybe once or twice as a tourist, or just passing through. So it's going to be interesting, and I will report back on my blog how that goes. But I'm hoping it's going to be just as awesome as Islamabad was, and just as awesome as DC London's been. Which, to be honest, has been more of a DrupalCon for me than DrupalCon project. Yeah, uh, we risk pissing people off because this is being recorded, but <laughs> DC Croydon, or DC London as they call it, wasn't really Groupon Croydon, it was really Groupon London, it was Croydon. This is this has more of a con experience, uh, it's, it's, don't you agree? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'd like to finish off by saying awesome work to one of the main organizers over here and all the other organizers and the sponsors, and the volunteers. And thank you very much for having me here and uh, for sharing my story. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't think this is the kind of presentation where you have questions, but if I you have questions. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I, I'd like to know, so you tried to put something on, and it was embarrassing, so you didn't do it. Then you get all these people. What made the difference? I, I mean, um, the difference was, like I said, we afterwards we broadcasted and then we narrowcasted. <clears throat> For the first one, we narrowcasted. So we got in touch with all the Drupal shops that are in Pakistan and we told them about this camp we're going to do. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were blunt and they said, we're not going to come because if we can't, we're going to poach our talent. You know, right. so it was like, look, it's not a recruitment camp and I promise you, I will not poach your talent. I, I even said to one guy, I was like, dude, I give it to you in writing. I'm not going to go after your stuff because uh, you don't have the ninjas I need. So the difference was after the first, after the embarrassment of having a non-camp, we broadcast it. So whereas previously I hadn't gone to Google Association, I hadn't spoken to Megan and said, basically, help. I don't know how to do this. I thought I did, but clearly I don't. I need someone to tell me how to do this. I thought it would be easy to just get people in a room, but it's not. So then I learned from the different people I got in touch with, what are the kinds of things you need to do, uh, how do you kind of like get exposure, how do you approach companies to kind of like, you know, just gently tell them about this thing you want to do. Instead of saying, I want you to send all your Google developers to this thing I'm holding. So one of the difference was this thing we are holding, this thing that the community is going to support. Um, so it was, it was more of a 
soft approach that I had to take, but it really did help that I got airtime in Munich. Because previously, some of the responses I'd had from some of the more supportive companies was, who gives a crap about Drupal camps and community? No one gives a crap about us. You know, we're an export-focused service economy. Why the hell do you want to do this? Why do you want to like waste your time and our time? Are you saying that the guys in Pakistan were aware of what was happening in Munich? When it started happening in Munich, when my uh, session got accepted, we went on a mad social media campaign right. within the Pakistani community in, in the Drupal sphere and the WordPress and the Joomla sphere and the open source sphere. Uh, I've got a very good friend who, relate, who leads the uh, open source community over there. So I said to him, or kind of pleaded to him, that dude, please put me on your blog. Just let people know that Pakistan's Drupal community has got airtime. So one of the things he said was, well, you've got airtime, and you're not really Pakistani. And I was like, yeah, but I'm talking about your country and your community. So that got a lot of people's attention. I wouldn't say it got everyone's attention, but after Munich, when one of the four parts at Munich was, uh, I think the title of the talk was Pakistan's Silent Majority. And the recording, the, the voice kind of like buggered up. So all you have from the Munich session are just silent slides. <laughs> so that was, that was like, oh, uh, oh. That happened with a few sessions. Uh, that, that happened with quite a few sessions. So that was kind of like funny. They were like, uh, yeah, they recorded you, but they, what, did, what exactly did you say that they had to like shut your mic down? Uh, so, yeah, Munich really helped because it kind of woke them up to the fact that, hey, someone actually gave this guy airtime to talk about us. So we've got to like sit up, take note, and see what they're doing. My question is actually like the open source, the open source um, community or the need for open source or the recognition of open source is really like, it's like low status in India, my understanding is. Like, oh, it's it's open source, and if you're not skilled, you might be using that. But if you're skilled, you've got your certifications in Microsoft and Java, mm -hmm. and you know, where is the perception of open source in, in Pakistan? Uh, it's different. Uh, one of the reasons is, okay, we've, all, all the MNCs, all the big industries are using Microsoft, SAP, Oracle, et cetera, et cetera. But Pakistan's always kind of like, you, you could say, like, Pakistan's IT industry is, and I'm choosing my words very carefully here, uh, uh, it's like almost like riding in the graph of the success of the Indian IT industry. So whereas open source isn't big in India, it is picking, it's picked up a lot more in Pakistan because you've got that talent there, you've got that space there where it's kind of like, okay, these guys don't want to do it, but you get similar discounted rates over here, so let's give these guys the work. Uh, its adoption in government hasn't been good at all. Uh, its adoption in mainstream industry hasn't been good at all. But as far as the export focused market is concerned, it's, it's, it's quite a big community. Do those jobs not have status or good, as good pay? Or? Um, no, it depends on, it, it, it actually, over there, it depends on the individual. So you could have like a .NET programmer who's working for like 300 pounds, 400 pounds a month. You could have a really good .NET programmer who's making 1400 pounds. So there's no like pay scale over there. It's, it's more like how good are you? So if you're like awesome, you can command really high rates. Then there's the whole question of demand and supply. So over there, developers kind of like know that, okay, there was a time when WordPress developers were very high in demand. Now Drupal developers are very high in demand. PHP is making a huge comeback. So they're kind of like quite clever in gearing up to those texts before, you know, they kind of like peak and plateau. So in that sense, they're, they're, they're quite sharp. So um, the really sharp cookies kind of like move into Drupal space because they know there's growing demand, they can command really good rates. I, I always assumed that the stereotype was that if you're working on something open source, then it's harder to sell. I don't know why people think that, but maybe that's why people don't want to one of the reasons. Right. I don't know. What would you think about that? Um, open source is, uh, the really good talent pool for open source is small. Uh, and I think that's that's a global problem. That's not just restricted to Middle Earth or any other region. Um, but to sell tech, open source tech to big companies and government, especially in that part of the world, is an absolute nightmare. 
because uh, open source tech, what it lacks is like, for instance, Acquia has no presence in Pakistan, Acquia is in India. So there is no, there's no collateral to counter their marketing propaganda. You know, not marketing material, but propaganda. Uh, so, whereas you find like, you know, Microsoft's billboards plastered all over the industrial sites, you have Oracle guys pounding on everyone's door. You don't have local open source shops going and saying, let's build an ERP or a they don't have this understanding that at the most basic level, we are all animals. You know, just evolved animals. And uh, we're pretty much the same. You just need to have a common language or a common passion or a common, some kind of commonality that you can yeah, convert. <laughs> Uh, no, that's yeah, kind of related. I was thinking about uh, some problems you could have um, setting yeah, up yeah, a community yeah. in like, like Pakistan. I was thinking about the talk that um, happened in Brighton last year. Yep, back and it was, now. Yeah, and it was about um, the Chinese community and one of the problems they had there is that there is a firewall and they don't have access to GitHub, for example. Yeah. Did you have any issue like that? Uh, no, in that regard, uh, Pakistan has uh, very lax laws. Uh, the only thing that gets banned in Pakistan is YouTube. Well, uh, and electricity. And electricity, yeah, they've got, but then they've got power generators. Uh, so YouTube and Facebook occasionally get banned for political reasons. Uh, YouTube was banned a few years ago because some minister ended up getting drunk and someone ended up taking a video, putting it on YouTube. So the government said, how do we solve this? Let's just ban YouTube and convince YouTube to take it off. And then you know what? Google actually took it off. Which was like, wow. There's a lot of yeah, yeah. censorship there. I mean, I, I don't know if you remember, the Geo Television Network got taken off because when they were live streaming once, mm -hmm. some random citizen who was near the camera decided to do it. Okay, this channel should be taken down. Oh, uh, that, that. And it was, it was there's, not broadcasting. Over there, censorship is always political. So uh, it's, it's kind of like uh, if the channel. If someone decides they want to charge more money from the channel and the channel says, well, that's kind of unfair, we're going to take you in court, they find any reason to shut the channel down. Uh, likewise, it's, uh, it's, it's a different world. Uh, I don't really know how to relate to it entirely, but I kind of muddled my way through it. Uh, like setting up the whole experience of setting up an office over there, getting property, going through like lawyers over there, uh, you know, accountants, etc. And I've been like bitten more than once in you know places, like mentioned many, many times. But at the end of the day, it boils down to your faith in the community and what exactly you're trying to achieve. So if it was just pure profitability that I wanted to achieve, I might as well have been in Vietnam, for instance, where the rates are much, much lower. But the connection and why I'm there is very different to just purely, I want to make money. I want to make money, but... <laughs> so it might be better to do offshore in Pakistan than in India, because uh, uh, offshore issues are the best. No. Uh, no and yes. Okay, I've, I've written an article about this. and uh, I used to write for a national newspaper over there until I wrote this article, then got banned. Uh, go on. Basically, what I wrote was that Pakistani IT industry can ride on the tails of the success of the IT industry in India. So, whereas India, many Indian companies have gone to China and outsourced that and had problems, what I suggested in that article was why don't they invest in Pakistan, where they speak more or less the same language, we've got the same culture, eat the same food, blah, 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 it's essentially the same. I'm not going to say the next word. A lot of trouble. Uh, so I said, why don't you? Why don't the Indians come to Pakistan and invest? And the Pakistani government allow the Indians to come and invest over there. And you know, there's no better way to get to know your neighbour than like have trade with them. Uh, and it didn't go down too well. But yeah, it's. I'd say uh, it's equally as good. I mean, I've I've worked with and I had a software shop in India as well. Uh, the problem I had with India was re, uh, retaining the stuff. We turned out to be a training company for the bigger companies. So we train our people, six months later, they go and join the company they, that wouldn't have hired them six months ago. Uh, we personally, me and my company, haven't had that problem in Pakistan. Uh, but I think that's more to do with 
us learning from the experience and then applying a different kind of culture to the new setup in Pakistan uh, rather than the market. So I would personally say you should outsource or offshore where you feel comfortable and you find the best talent. Yeah, well, I think one of the issues with India is that there's this um, hierarchy is, is very important. Is that true in Pakistan as well? It depends on the culture you create in your company. It's de it depends on how you nurture your own community. So I've always, like, one of the barriers I haven't been able to break is people calling me sir. And I'm like, look, the old lady hasn't knighted me yet. When she does, you can call me sir. Uh, but we've got a pretty much flat hierarchy, so we don't have, uh, like, a managing director, godlike figure. Uh, I was told ages ago that to work in India or Pakistan, you need a god in your office. Uh, I don't believe that. I've, I've never worked like that. I've hated environments that have a pyramidical, hierarchical structure. I hate societies like that. And I didn't grow up like that. So that's alien to me. So it depends on what you nurture within your own organization. So yeah, there are companies in Pakistan, majority of them probably, who have the same culture. Because you know what? Other than a line that divides them to those two countries, they're pretty much the same. Look at 347. They were the same country. So you can't really take culture away by calling one country, you know, one landmass something else and expect it's all gonna change. But it depends on, on how you work, uh, what kind of culture you nur uh, nurture, uh, how, you, how you make your staff feel like they're your peers and not your staff. Uh, and how you kind of bring out the juniors. Uh, because they are, they, they determine the culture that's gonna prevail in the company. Any questions? Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about the experiences, it's all up on my blog.